All right, so in this video, this short video, we're going to look at interpreting some key features um, of a graph, and I have two examples I want to show you. All right, so let's take a look at this example. So some first, let's discuss some key features. Um, so some key features of linear functions are the intercepts or where the graph crosses each axis. So your x-axis or your y-axis. So here, this is my y-axis and this is my x-axis. So some key features would be where that graph crosses these um, each particular axis. And also the slope or the rate of change and the intervals where the function increases or decreases. So now looking at this graph here, is, um, it shows us uh, the, how much it will cost to rent a car. So in this case, our Y value represents the total cost and our X value represents the miles driven. Keep in mind or remember that our X value is the independent variable because the amount of money we pay depends on the amount of miles that we drive. So looking at this example here, let's look at A. It says consider the Y intercept. So the Y intercept is right here around this red circle. And that is the ordered pair 0, I'm going to say 32. It's closer to the 30, so 0, 32. It says how many miles have been driven at this time? And so it would be 0 miles because x is represented by 0 and x is our miles driven. So that's our x value. How much was the total cost? The total cost was about $32 because that is represented by our Y value right here because Y is represented by our cost in dollars. And C, it says, what does the Y intercept represent in this context? The initial cost of the rental car is $32 before any miles are driven. So before we even uh, drive that car off the lot, we would have to pay uh, $32 before we drive any amount of miles. Let's take a look at our last example here. So it says the graph below represents the number of tickets that a theater must sell in order to generate $350 in revenue from the ticket sales. Keep in mind that we have distinct points here. So no line, but we have the distinct points in a line. And so this would be a discrete graph because we have um, distinct ordered pairs. So let's look at A. It says, what is the x-intercept and what does it represent in the context of the problem? So remember, the x-intercept is where that graph crosses the x-axis. And the x-intercept is right here. That is the ordered pair 70, 0. And so what it represents is when 70 adult tickets are sold and zero child, tic zero ch child tickets must be sold to get a revenue of $350. All right, let's look at B. What is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is right here where the graph crosses the y-axis. That ordered pair would be 0, 140. And so the y-axis is represented by the children's tickets. Forgot to mention it earlier. And the x-axis is represented by the adult tickets. All right, so this tells us when 140 child tickets are sold, Zero adult tickets must be sold to get a revenue of $350. So the ordered pair here, remember, is 70, 0, because that's our x intercept. The ordered pair here would be 140, 0. All right. So let's look at C. It says, over which interval, if any, is the function positive? What does it represent in the context of the problem? And our hint is which coordinate represents the value of the function, x or y. So from, ze from 0 to 70, or basically if x is greater than 0 but less than, greater than or equal to 0 but less than 70, where x is whole numbers, it has to be whole numbers because we're looking at ticket sales. So you can't have uh, half a ticket, right? So it says the number of adult and child tickets must always be greater than or equal to zero when the revenue is $350. So no 
um, negative amount of tickets here. All right, so from zero to 70, it must be positive. All right, so last, it says, what is the slope and what does it represent? So we could pick two ordered pairs. I'm going to pick um, the last, the smaller ones here, right here and here. And I could count down one, two. And so this is represented by 20, all right? So that would be a negative 20. Then I will go over 60 to 70. That would be a positive 10. So negative 20 over positive uh, 10 would leave me with negative 2. So my slope is negative 2. And you can pick any two points. I just think it's easier to pick the smaller points. And I always start at the point closest to my left. If I have to go up or down, if I have to go down, in this case, the graph is negative, then I always go to the right. So that's the easiest way that I find the slope. And then it says for every two less child tickets, one more adult ticket must be sold to reach the revenue of $350. So that is what the slope represents. All right, so we've interpreted some key features of uh, this graph with theater ticket sales. Okay, so we've reached the end of our lesson. I want to thank you for learning with me. Some related videos are comparing properties of two functions as well as graphing a line and slope intercept form. And if you haven't already, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And once again, I would like to thank you for learning with me.